Our show today what i have is a full review of the 13 inch macbook pro with retina display so just in case you missed my unboxing video earlier here it is again in about 15 seconds and basically what you get in the box is a power adapter an ac wall plug a power cord some manuals some apple stickers and also a cleaning cloth oh and of course the macbook pro itself so let's start with design it has a height of 1.8 centimeters, a width of 31.4 centimeters, a depth of 21.9 centimeters, and it weighs approximately 3.4 pounds, so we can say three and a half pounds. It has an aluminum unibody design, and overall the fit and finish of this product is just really good. Apple makes their notebooks feel really high-end and premium. And if you've ever touched a MacBook Pro before, then you know what I'm talking about. And as far as features go, starting on the left-hand side, we have an SDXC card slot. We have an HDMI port. And we have a USB 3 port. On the left side, we have a MagSafe 2, 1, and 2 Thunderbolt 2 ports. A USB 3 port. A headphone jack. And we also have dual microphones on this side. Here's a look at the bottom of the Mac Pro. We have four rubber feet or pads. One, two, three, and four. On the bottom of this Mac Pro, you have 10 torque screws to take a look inside. And that's pretty much all you're gonna be doing is looking inside because a lot of the components inside this Mac Pro are either glued or soldered in. And that is a bad thing on Apple's part. Bad Apple. So as far as upgrading the Mac Pro by yourself goes, it's not looking good. Apple pretty much wants you to upgrade the Mac Pro when you buy it and have them do it for you right off the back and spend more money. Bad Apple. Bad Apple. <laughs> but to be fair, most people don't upgrade their MacBook Pro anyway and right off the back, even the most base model, which is the one that we have, is pretty awesome and pretty fast right when you buy it with the stock configuration. So good Apple, I guess. On the left, we have some vents so this thing can breathe, release some heat. And we have some vents on the right as well. Now this particular Mac Pro we have, we have the very base model which starts at $1,299. It features a 2.4 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5 processor with turbo boost up to 2.9 gigahertz. Four gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of PCIe flash storage, Intel Iris graphics, Wi-Fi 802.11, Bluetooth 4.0, and the included operating system at the moment is OS X Mavericks 10.9, which includes a huge bundle of free software. And this particular base MacBook Pro can be configured up to $1,899. But if you get the highest end 13 inch spec model, you can actually configure that one up to $2,699. So opening up the MacBook Pro, you are greeted with a very familiar layout. You have a chiclet style backlit keyboard, which is very responsive. You can raise or lower the brightness of the keyboard. And it looks really cool in a low lit area. You have a really nice trackpad, it's glass, um, works really well. It can do all types of multi adjusters with it. So many adjusters, I'm not even sure how to use all of them, but uh, it works flawlessly, it works really well. But inside the settings menu, there's a cool little option called trackpad, which shows you how to use all the gestures on the trackpad. So if you're new to it, this will help you out a lot. You'll be a pro in a matter of, well, I don't really know. But check it out. Up top above the screen you have a 720p front facing FaceTime camera. And of course you have this gorgeous display. It's a Retina Display 13.3 inch diagonal LED backlit display with IPS technology. 2560 by 1600 resolution at 227 ppi pixels per inch. And as a result you get really crisp clear text, great lines, great details and you really want to just watch HD movies all day long. It just looks really good. Just have a look. See for yourself.
right here I have the camera pretty close to the display and as you can see you don't lose much detail at all and it's just hands down one of the best looking displays on the market. It's really great for photographers and video editing. As far as performance goes, I used a few benchmarking apps to give you kind of an idea of what some real world tests might be like. So right here we have Nova Bench and we got a score of 595. Using Black Magic, our write speed stayed right around 300 and our read speed stayed right around 680. Using Geekbench 2, we got a single core score of 2,200 and a multi score of 4,418. And last benchmarking app we're going to use is Cinebench. It's going to take a look at your CPU and your GPU. It's going to show you how your system processes moving graphics and also how your system processes still high resolution pictures. Or at least give you an idea so you can do some comparisons. We got an OpenGL score of 11.12 and a CPU score of 180. And if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you can see how it stacks up against other machines. And as far as real world performance goes, I played a couple of games. The games run really smooth on this thing. I downloaded them right out of the app store. And then also doing things like multitasking or editing in iMovie. I didn't edit in Final Cut Pro in this particular one, but I did do some editing in iMovie, some pretty heavy editing as well. And everything ran pretty well. And in this situation right here, I pretty much have every application open on the MacBook itself. And as you can see, it's still running pretty smooth. And you're probably wondering, well, how loud is the fan or how hot does it get? Well, I did some tests with it as well. Check this out. So right here with the thermometer hanging right outside the vent with 30 applications running, or right about 30 applications running, we got it up to 120 degrees. And keep in mind, that's with the thermometer right outside the vent. So it's not going to feel nearly that hot when it's on your lot. And in fact, it gets a little warm, but it doesn't feel that hot at all. Now, with the fan at full speed, our decibel reader goes all the way up to 55. Now, keep in mind, that's with the decibel reader right above the actual fan vent itself. And I still have all 30 applications still going, but standing three feet away, you can still barely hear the fan. And most of the time, you barely notice that it's even on. But right here, I'm pushing it to the limit for the sake of the video. From my experience, it starts up less than 13 seconds. And it takes right around 17 seconds to shut completely down. As far as battery life goes, Apple claims you're going to get right around 9 hours of doing various things and that's pretty accurate as long as you have the brightness right around 50 to 60%. So in conclusion, this is a great notebook. It's extremely portable and fairly light. It has a MagSafe cable, so if someone runs into the cord, the entire notebook won't come down with it. It has a great screen, so reading text, watching HD videos, or looking at high resolution images is a pleasure. And if the screen is too small for you and you need a bigger real estate, you can always add an external monitor. A wireless stereo headset. Check back soon for a full review. Take care. I'll see you guys. The fit and finish of this particular notebook is really solid. There is no squeaky, plasticky sounds, unlike the plastic table that it's on. Now for the bad, and I only have two things bad to say about it. One is the speakers, they're just not that good, but they're okay, but you kind of expect that in the notebook anyway. We have the Sony PlayStation Gold Wireless Stereo Okay, so we have the Sony PlayStation Gold Wireless Stereo. And the last and final thing is you can't upgrade this machine yourself. If you want it upgraded, you pretty much have to do it at the point of purchase, and that can be pretty expensive. So that kind of sucks, but that's kind of what's going on with these new dinner notebooks where everything's kind of glued or either soldered in. It's not impossible to get into this thing and to do some things, but it just makes it extremely difficult. The days of just taking out a couple of torque screws and swapping things out are over with. Well, for some people. So that's been my review of the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina Display. Take care. I'll see you guys in our next video, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.